role of stocks, stocks characterize state of the system, it provides snapshot status of the system and helps data to make, provides data to help make decisions. So, snapshot status means to make any decisions you need some information. Like for example, if you are flying a plane, you need to know its altitude, you need to know the wind speed, you need to know the say outside and inside temperatures, you need to know the what is it, uh, the actual ground speed and what is the speed at which you are flying, the altitude, the direction, the bearing, you need various information. So, all the information that you need to make decisions that provides the state of the system at any point in time, where is the aircraft, what all characterizes it. So, all those things become the stock because they provide data to make decisions, whatever the data may be. So, if you are going to use it, that becomes a stock. So, what is uh, if you are a production manager, then you need to have information about what is the current inventory on hand, what is the expected demand uh, forecast, what is the expected order that is in pipeline, that you ordered, we are not yet received, what is the current cost of the raw material, what, how much raw materials you need to make this current production, uh, how many workers are there in the factory. You need to know all the information to make the correct production decision at that point in time. So, all those information are can be classified as stocks, that is the characterized state of system. So, in any other course, if you are saying that okay, this is defined as state of system, that means you characterize the stock. Stocks provide system with inertia and memory, stocks only change through rates. What I mean by inertia and memory is that it accumulates past events. Like in the previous example, once the water level reaches a desired water level, it does not disappear, it just remains there forever until there is an outflow. If system does not have an outflow, it is not going to change. You can simulate it for how many ever time period you want, the stock remains. So, that is what I mean by saying that it provides memory. And inertia and sense is not going to change until there is some change in the stock the flow rate. If flow is always 0, the value of stock does not change. Only if flow changes, then that forces the stock to change. So, in real systems, where does it help? For example, if you want to model the amount of ozone in the atmosphere, even if you stop the production of all uh, say ozone producing equipments like you know shut down CFCs and other stuff, refrigerants. But still, the current ozone that is accumulated will continue to remain there. That stock does not disappear. Even the current rate of release of ozone or CFCs, ozone depleting CFCs, you stop, your flow stops to 0, but your stock still continues to have that value. So, that is what is called as memory. The stock is something which characterizes that data system. It, it has to change only if some external force is applied, it is not going to change. Stocks are source of delays, like all delays involve stocks. Like um, if I want to, uh, an example like a courier, suppose uh, sending any, any package through FedEx or UPS or whatever courier, it does not reach instantaneously. You send it and after a time lag, it reaches. So, until then, the package does not disappear, it is there in the system somewhere. So, you can say, okay, uh, packages in pipeline as a stock, so that the matter is concerned. So, whenever there is delays involved, that means that information or that order or that material has to be there somewhere. So, whenever there is delays are involved, it means that stock is there somewhere and after say the package is delivered, that then that package in pipeline gets reduced. So, we can use it to represent uh, the difference between the inputs and outputs. So, what is a delay? Delay means output lags behind the input, right. In a delay, output lags behind the input. So, until then, things has to be remain somewhere. So, that we characterize as a stop. That is a simple definition of delay output stacking behind input. Stocks decouple rates of flow and create disequilibrium dynamics. It also absorbs the difference between inflows and outflows. Stocks characterizes 
state of system that's an important point stocks uh, provide memory third we saw uh, delays involve stock what we mean is delays delay means output lags behind input so if i have uh, say letters dispatch and then i have letters delivered so delivered will typically be whatever letters are dispatched some periods earlier or whatever letters dispatched today will be delivered say some uh, real time periods later or say one week later so one week worth of letters has to be there in the pipeline so we can have a stock called as letters in pipeline this becomes your stock of course these other two becomes as delays or as soon as you put raw materials into the shop floor it doesn't become finished product it takes some it spends some time in the shop floor after end of a week or end of a day or end of some a month it becomes a finished product right so raw materials after a delay becomes a finished product so until then until during the production process those are the kind of raw materials is available within the shop floor so delays involve stocks it is not that everything what a letter dispatch has to come as letters delivered it can be completely different things let us look at it as an uh, example decouples rates of flow so let us see let us have a stock of say food grain So, what will affect the stock of food grains? How will it increase? How will it decrease? So, we just simply let us call it production, production rate. And let us call it consumption rate. Production rate, consumption rate. So, as consumption rate changes, the food grains change. I mean, reduces. as production rate increases i get more food grains the production rate comes down i get less food grains but this is not a delay it is not that whatever i produce after some time i consume though it might happen production and consumption are controlled by completely different things so what do you think affects the production of food grains as you can see completely different things can govern your flows and rates but end result is what you are interested in how much food grains we have Just by mapping it out gives us some better sense because the rainfall follows some patterns and various other dynamics affects it. But eventually, of course, indirectly, how much you are willing to invest, etc., may be dependent on how much has been consumption rate in the past, based on the day you want to make some decisions or some feedback does occur. But this talk has helped distinguish between these two key things. Though link is. their difference get accumulated here within the this particular stock so to identify stocks we can use things like you know my difficulty is when you look at a system how to identify stocks and flows we can start using the units of measure stocks are quantities and associated rates are same units per time period that is quite simple if you have a stock uh, for example if food grains are in tons then production also has to be measured in tons per time period say tons per year consumption also should be in tons per year so whatever the units of uh, stock we have the same unit should the flows also should have you can remember because underlying you are having a differential equation right so the unit should match you can't just subtract things which is has no 
unit, unit mismatch cannot occur. Snapshot test, this is like imagine you are freezing a scene, this is uh, that is you remove time from the picture and whatever is remaining you see those are the values of stocks. So, these can be both physical or it can be uh, informational or it can be tangible as well as intangible things, both can occur in this when you freeze the scene. Like uh, when time is stopped, population is known, not the birth rate. Just look at the rate, you need to look at two different time points. So, what you can see is actually the uh, population, or if you we stop the factory's production, you can see the amount of inventories at various points in time, but not the production rate. So, that is what I mean by saying that when you freeze time, what happens? Stocks can be physical, physical quantity information, or even memories and beliefs. So, what is the expected orders per week? What is the expected price of uh, onions? So, we have some mental beliefs uh, which are accumulated that also will be calculated as a stock. What is the say employee morale? What is the inflation, expected inflation? So, those are again values that we have in uh, kind of uh, what can you say? This forms part of our memories and beliefs, which also is a stock. As I told, stocks uh, uses memory. So, so all memories can be modeled as a stock. Choice of time units must be consistent. Like uh, in the agriculture example, consumption can't be in uh, tons per day, while the production is in tons per annum. Simulation won't work. The unit should match. Flows can be positive or negative. Please remember that we are just dealing with a simple simulation. It has no extra logic built into that. It doesn't. It is just a variable names for it. So just by looking at the variable, you may have a sense of direction of positive. This is a. This cannot go negative and things like that. But for computer, it's uh, not going to do anything. So you have to be careful in defining whether that sense of direction is positive or negative, and accordingly you model the system. Contents of stock flow network is conserved. So, whatever leaves the stock, leaves the flow kind of goes into the stock, whatever stock drain it goes into the next stock and so on, it does not just uh, disappear from the network. So, we have to uh, remember that. Hmm. Inventory of stock drinks, what do you think stock or flow? It is a stock, what could be its units? model procurement of soft drinks. So, flow what could be its units? What is per some time period? So, if you want to the shop is buying it every say week, we can put a week, bottles per week. Assigning homeworks in a course, flow or a start. There is only two few guys that in summer half of you have to be correct. See, let us look at the word is assigning homeworks in a course. So, it is flow that is uh, units. Let us go to let us look at questions per week. There is an assigning homeworks comes as a rate. The number of homeworks uh, due that will be a stock or number of uh, uncompleted pending assignments, number of pending homeworks will be a stock. The assignment uh, assignments are given that stock increases as and when you complete it that stock goes down. Room temperature units ok degree Celsius fine. Employee morale Units, no, no, it can't be unit less. You have to come up with some unit. Yeah, we just come up with a. So let us keep it simple and call it say percentage. What is it? Sorry. Salary. 
that's not the units i don't think so not everything is governed by that ha huh? yeah we can assume whatever you know, morale is extremely high we'll say about 100% is the morale and then we'll I mean, I'm just making the scale between zero to hundred. Promotion of associate professor to professor. The flow can be number of, say, employees per. Uh, the promotion doesn't happen every day, month. Maybe we'll put it a year. So we'll look at reasonable time scale, number of employees, rupees to dollar exchange rate. So it depends on how we are model. So when you someone say auxiliary information, they're modeling something else, and you just want that information for now, and that remains constant and doesn't change with the system. Then we can consider it like that. But there is no option. I have only stock or flow. So I'm not doing the context, but here it is like a stock so at any point in time even if freeze now you you know the exchange rate right now various things you know how the stocks are being traded keeps uh, changing this uh, rupees to dollar uh, the rupees per dollar so the units is uh, again comes to be same as rupees per dollar the entire units for it so this is your ways we can actually try to quantify it. we are very cool and we are kind of very used to things which are physical you know informational to some extent once you get into memories and beliefs it starts becoming controversial or rather subject lot of discussions i may prefer percentage you may prefer a scale between 0 to 10 or minus 10 to 10 it is fine so we just pick up some units and be consistent with that the unit and how it affects you or between 0 to 1 can make a measure and then come up with the employee morals ha ah. so this is not all whatever jason have order doesn't need to be exchange rates so whatever the expected value whatever is the current value can continue to be a stock ah uh, let me give another example or uh, let me draw it differently give me minutes let's take a another example Let's see, see customer demand, and you say customer demand occurs is usually units per week, sales units per week. But then demand, when you ask a shop or when you find out, we all 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 know the values of the demand. Okay, what is the forecasted demand for the next week or the expected order? So the expected order. Expected order per week. could very well be a stock and this could be the change in expected order so the units for this is say uh pieces per week and change in expected order could be pieces per week which is units of the stock per week similar with exchange rate whenever you go there is a board the money exchanger where the value is written for you so that is today's rate he is not going to change it every minute for you the rate is already given maybe computerized systems still some more updates that sucker and that access a kind of a thumb rule for people but at any point in time you are able to freeze it and get that value so in that sense you are modeling rupees per dollar exchange rate and rupees per dollar exchange rate how it changes every minute we can then model as a change in the exchange rate as a flow like this similar to this change in exchange rate and this can be the exchange rate actually and having done that maybe i can give some more examples like uh, with units for example uh, let's take it as uh, product price and change in product price
so product price is typically say rupees per unit right change in product price is rupees per unit per uh, let's assume it fluctuates daily per day some can change over time over year etc so these also others some of it are very intuitive like for example population then you know ki population is a number of people and birth rate is people per annum death rate is also people per annum okay population is quite straight for uh, inventory production inventory is a uh, stock keeping unit let's say or what else cases or bottles in our example bottles production production rate is bottles per minute consumption rate also can be in bottles per minute so then this change though the direction is only one so some of the modeling convention this says us to do it this one also this is actually bidirectional arrow to model it so as a change is positive it increases exchange rate change becomes negative it decreases the exchange rate so whether you are adding a negative or subtracting a positive so it's better to just don't worry about double headed arrow just put one headed arrows showing the direction and so that is the direction which is getting added so if the value becomes negative it kind of subtract and becomes white 